Welcome back to the Neo X training series. Uh, in the previous video, we looked at the main screen and front panel and the rear connections. Um, and the next thing we're going to need to do before we control our lights is patch them in. We need to tell the console what lights we've got uh, and give the console some information about those fixtures. So to do that, we're going to go into the patch window. So I can go and choose patch here on the console. Uh, and this takes us into our patch screen. On the left hand side, we've got our fixture table. So this is a big old list really of all of the fixtures that we've got in the console. Um, and it allows us to see all of the various information about them. On the top right, um, we've got our DMX output window. So this allows us to view each universe on the console uh, and we can see how full or empty the universe is. And we can actually see what channels are in use and by what fixtures. And then bottom right of this window, we've then got our fixture library. So this is where we can go and access uh, fixtures from the console's library, uh, which is regularly updated. At the bottom, we've got our patch command line. So when we go and type commands into here, we are actually going to be uh, typing in patch information rather than fixture control information. First thing we're going to do is clear out the fixtures that are already in the console to allow us to patch it from afresh, essentially. Um, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some syntax uh, and I'm going to go and say 21 through and then I'm going to go and say at enter. So 21 through at enter, what, what is that doing? Well, that's saying fixture 21 through to the last of that type, select those fixtures. And then an at enter is actually going to unpatch them. So the process of saying at enter is essentially clearing those out. So 21 through at enter, that selected all of the fixture types starting at 21. So I'm able to get rid of a batch of fixtures if I want to. Um, but in my case here, actually, I know I want to get rid of everything from fixture 21 onwards. So in that case there, I can literally just say 21 through, but this time define a fixture number. So I'm actually going to say in my case here, 21 through 200 at enter and that's going to get rid of all of those fixtures. My console scrolled me down to the last of those fixtures, 200, it's not used anymore, um, but I can just go and say one enter and that's going to take me back up to the top of the list and, and it's going to show me uh, fixture number one in my console. So we've cleared out the uh, fixtures there, um, but we can now go in and patch some new fixtures. So that's where we can go and use our fixture library. Um, you'll see here that your fourth encoder wheel is fixture select. So that's a really useful way of just scrolling through the fixtures you need. And once you've found a manufacturer, you can go ahead and click on that to, to choose the, the manufacturer and then find the fixture you need. Um, but in my case here, I know exactly what I need. So I'm going to go and search for that. So I'm just going to go and grab my keyboard. And I want to patch in some VO2600 spots. So I'm going to go grab control of those. So I'll type that in, VO2600 spot. You'll see as I type, the console is, is searching the list for me. So I found my VO2600 spot there, and I can then choose which mode I want to use. So in my case here, I'm going to go and choose the enhanced mode. Uh, and that is now selected. I can see that chosen in the fixture library. So now I can go ahead and patch that in. So I need to decide what fixture numbers I want to use to control that fixture. And so I can define that through syntax. Now, in my case here, I want those fixtures um, starting at 101, fixture 101, and I know I've got 10 of them. So I can actually type in 101 through 110. That's defining which fixtures numbers I want to use for those fixtures. And I can then go and say at, and then I can type in, first of all, the universe number, um, if you're patching across more than one universe. So in this case here, I'm actually going to go and patch these onto universe six, for example. So I'm going to go and say at six point, and then I can type in the start address. Now, of course, the start address is the address of the first fixture. And by default, if I just define that start address, let's say, for example, um, DMX address one, to keep things simple, the console will automatically assign one fixture after the other uh, sequentially, and it's going to factor in the footprint, the number of channels that that fixture uses. Um, but if you want to, you can actually define how many um, channels there are between each start address. So in my case, I might want to say, right, I want each of these fixtures um, 
50 DMX addresses apart, so I can say fixture uh, start address 1, 51, 101 onwards. So to do that, I can just go and say plus plus, which brings offset into my command line, and I can then type exactly that. I can say I want an offset of 50. And as soon as I've typed in all of that information, I can press enter. And we can now see that we've got our fixtures patched in, 101 through 110, and you can indeed see in the, the DMX address column there, each of the start addresses, 151, 101, and so on. So now we've got these fixtures patched in, we can start to go ahead and edit them if we want to. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close my keyboard draw because I don't need that anymore. Um, and let's go ahead and start to look at some of this information. So first of all, I can just change the address of any of these fixtures. Maybe I've added it in incorrectly, for example. So to do that, I can literally go ahead and edit the cell and I can use my, uh, my uh, uh, number pad to change that. So I might want to go and pop that on, for example, uh, a different universe. So I might want to go and see this is supposed to be on 7.1. And so I can change the address that that fixture is on. Also in here, we can actually go in and um, change our pan and tilt settings. So we can flip the pan and that sort of thing. And um, we can actually go in and change uh, dimmer profiles as well within here. And we can also change the fixtures defaults. So within the defaults column here for the fixture, I can go and click on one of my fixtures, and I then get a breakdown, I get a table up here that shows me all of the current default values. And if I want to edit that, for example, change what the pan default is, I can click on it and I can just type in a new value, or I can actually choose a palette. So if you have already pre-programmed some palettes for these fixtures, you can actually go and use one of those palettes to tell the console what values it should be in by default. So that's those options there. Now, what I can do is I can go use my first encoder just to pan across um, to show us some other columns that we've got available to us. Um, and some of those are position, purpose, and color. Now, those are just text fields. We can go and type in per, uh, position, purpose, and color information, but that is really useful because if you take the time to add that data into the console, the console will then use that information to start to create some quick select options. So I'm just going to go and say one enter, because I've already done this for uh, my first six fixtures, my front of house fixtures. So within the position information for those, I've said, told, the, told my console that one through six, they're front of house, and I've actually then gone and put the purpose in. So I've told the console which ones of those are center stage, for example. Now, the nice thing about that is if I pop back to live, so I'm going to go and click my live button, I can go ahead and say, yes, I do want to save those changes that I've made. Um, it's now possible to go to my view options, and I can go and open my quick select bar on the console, and you can see here I've now got a center stage button, and that has been created purely based on that text information that I've added in. So I can go and click center stage like I've just done there and go ahead and click full on my console and that's very quickly grabbed control of those center stage fixtures for me. Um, so let's go ahead and jump back to patch. Um, so again, that, that logic is applicable to all three of those columns and the console will create those uh, quick select groups for you. We've spoken there about how we can add fixtures in and start to edit some information about those. Um, but let's talk a little bit about relays as well. Um, so as well, of course, of actually patching in the fixtures you want to control, you might want to be able to actually control the power to those fixtures. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. So the first one of those is that we can actually patch relays in just like fixtures. Uh, and so you might want to do that um, if you um, want easier control of your relays, uh, or indeed if you actually want to program relays into your show. Uh, there might be some situation where you want to turn a relay on or off. So if we want to patch in our, our relays manually so that we can control them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my first encoder and now I'm just going to whiz up to the very top of my fixture library. Uh, and within here, um, we've got conventionals and generics. So for, within conventionals, these are just um, uh, single parameter fixtures, so either 8-bit or 16-bit, so I can very easily, for example, add in some profiles or Fresnel, so I very easily know uh, what conventional fixtures I've got. Um, but if I go into generics, in here we've got multiple different uh, LED configuration options, so RGB, RGBAW, so if you've just got simple LED fixtures, chances are there's something in there that's suitable. 
Uh, and alongside of those, we do have Relay. So I'm going to scroll down and choose Relay by clicking on the uh, encoder button there to choose it. And we can then patch our Relay, just like a normal fixture. So in my case here, um, I want my relay control to be fixture number 201. So I'm going to start to patch this in. I'm going to go and say 201. Uh, but I'm then going to go and say at. And I might decide that actually I would like multiple DMX addresses to be controlled at once. So I can actually give this single relay fixture multiple DMX addresses. So I might want to say uh, 201 at 7.476, that's going to say that uh, at universe 7, start address 476, through 7.512. And so that's going to be saying that um, fixture 201, which is a relay, is controlling DMX addresses 7.476 through to 7.512. So I can go and click enter on that. And you can see here that um, if we go and pan back across, you can see that uh, I have got information here saying that fixture uh, 201 is controlling multiple addresses. And if I go and select universe 7 using my second encoder wheel here, and I'm actually going to go and scroll all the way down using my third encoder wheel, we can see that those addresses um, are actually assigned as inverted non-DIM channels. So if we pop to live, and again, I'm going to go and say, yep, I do want to save that. Um, you, we can see here I've now got a relay fixture patched in. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm actually going to go to my DMX view, choose Universe 7 on the console, and I'm going to just scroll down to the bottom of that. And I can see there that by default, those relay channels are on. Um, and so by default, when the console's on, those relays will come on. But if I want to, I could actually go and say 201 full, and because it's an inverted relay, that's a way of actually me being able to control those relays uh, and to turn those addresses off. So that is one of the options you've got when it comes to your relay control. Um, but the other way is actually associating a relay channel for every single fixture. So to do that, let's pop back into patch. And within patch, I'm going to go and say one enter to select fixture one. And if I go and scroll across on here, there is a relay column for all of our fixtures that is available. Um, so in this example, I'm actually going to say that fixture one's relay address is 7.201 enter. And so I have addressed a relay channel for fixture one. So now if we go back to live, and again say, yep, we want to save those changes. Um, if I go and select fixture one, one enter, we now actually have relay controls within that fixtures control window. Those relay channels are all just within that fixtures controls. Um, and we can see there that fixture 201, I've got that in my DMX view there. And we can see that as we start to go and use that relay control, we can see that we've got control of that relay channel. So once you've got your fixtures and your relays all configured in and patched, um, we can then configure the console to, to get the data out of the console. We can tell what console methods we wish to use to get the data out of the desk. So for that, I'm going to go to Options. Uh, I'm going to go to System Properties. Uh, and within here, we're taken straight to the DMX uh, tab. Uh, we can see here all of the universes that we've got patched and in use on our console. Uh, we can go in per universe and choose which protein call that universe is outputting to, and we can actually then go and configure which um, protocol universe um, we're using. And as well as that, if you're not going out over Ethernet, if you're using the physical DMX outputs on the back of the console, go to console ports, and in there you can go and choose which of your desk universes that you've patched onto are output from each port. And once we've done all of that, we can go ahead and click close, um, and I can go and, go and grab control of my fixtures, and I can go ahead and start to control those. Um, so that's our patching video. Um, there's lots more information in the training videos that are both on the console itself 
and on YouTube. We've got four dedicated videos going in much more detail. Uh, and in the next uh, video, we're going to be talking about all about starting to grab control of our fixtures uh, and how we can adjust the intensity of them.